air traffic growth, present and projected, stimulates the development of larger, faster, higher performing aircraft and of increased pilot information and control capability. In the control and display fields, research at the Boeing Company is directed toward devising advances in the computer fields, advances that furnish dependable information in all aspects of navigation and control. For instance, to accomplish one critical task of flight management, safe, smooth landing, on time, and in any weather, the technical staff of Boeing's commercial airplane division has evolved a new concept in the display of attitude, director, and landing situation information, the EADI. The EADI concept evolved from flight control problems revealed by Boeing's supersonic transport research. In 1965, pilots flying test missions on SST simulators under instrument conditions requested a gross expansion of the pitch indicator scale. B-70 flight crew experience tended to verify this need. At the same time, pilots working on the certification of systems for Category 2 landing were reporting the limitations of the instruments then available for monitoring Autoland system performance in low visibility. Therefore, Boeing commenced development of the EADI concept on this visual flight simulator located at its Kent, Washington facility. The development utilized a cab, a model room, and a digital computer. After months of simulator work, a breadboard instrument was mounted in the 707 prototype, commonly called the Dash 80. The display screen seen by the pilot occupies the top center position of the pilot's basic T panel. And the experimental breadboard installation is here, complete with TV camera controls, mode selectors, symbol switching for use on test flights, and a monitor for viewing the same information seen by the pilot in the cockpit. The camera was mounted under the forward bulkhead to pick up ground images. There is also a panel to control symbol display. Let's run through the symbol format. This is the basic attitude display, a fixed miniature airplane and a bold black horizon line. The light area above the horizon denotes sky, the darker area below is the ground. These are pitch increment lines, the long ones are 10 degrees, the short ones 5. For example, in this sequence we read 0, 5 degrees down, 10 degrees up. Here's a roll right, and now a left. When these computer-driven flight director symbols appear, the intermediate pitch lines move out to reduce clutter. Here are the fly right, fly left, and zero commands. Fly up, fly down, and zero pitch. The black bar on the left wing displays airspeed error from selected reference. Too fast, too slow, and on reference. The heavy white bar displays the actual flight path angle irrespective of airplane attitude. Climbing three degrees level flight and descending three degrees. A feature believed unique to the Boeing EADI is the thrust management, frequently called the potential flight path indicator. The short bar responds to aircraft fore and aft acceleration. 
when aligned with the flight path bar, it indicates to the pilot that the existing thrust setting is just adequate to support the present flight path. When the aircraft decelerates, the potential flight path bar moves below the actual flight path bar. For acceleration, of course, the reverse is true. The radio altimeter, which will have a full 2,500 foot range in production models, has a 780 foot range for this breadboard. Superfluous information is eliminated by displaying altitude in 10 foot increments down to 90 feet. It has two foot steps below 90. The rectangle symbol or ILS window proved to be the most effective of several methods considered for displaying raw localizer and glide slope information. As long as the center dot of the airplane symbol is inside the rectangle, the captain knows his approach is within tolerances for a category three landing. Here's excessive deviation left on the localizer. On course and right. Excessive glide slope deviation is shown next. Too high on the glide slope. On glide, too low. The crabbed approach problem can be handled in several ways. One method for aircraft with drift sensors is to provide a notch in the center of the flight path bar and drive the flight path and potential flight path bars left or right proportional to the amount of drift. So, crab left or drift right, the flight path bar moves right. In a crab right situation, it moves left. Thus, the pilot is provided with information on his instantaneous velocity vector with respect to the desired aim point. When the TV input is switched on, the image of the approach terrain can be viewed in conjunction with flight path and pitch scale displays for precise flight control. Notice that the upper portion of the TV image is blanked. This avoids reflections from the airplane skin and provides an uncluttered background for command symbols. Since installation in the Dash 80, the EADI has been tested in many locales and often in connection with other programs. During the summer of 1968, a test program was conducted at Oakland, California airport by NASA's Ames Aeronautical Laboratory. NASA was studying noise reduction problems. Boeing joined in the program to gain additional EADI experience. At Wichita, Kansas, the EADI was demonstrated to airline representatives, thus gaining the advantage of their pilot experience, reactions, and suggestions. One valuable improvement resulting from their comments was making the horizon line blacker and bolder. This made visual orientation easier and quicker for the pilot. During the Wichita tests, the five degree lower pitch line was borrowed and made adjustable to serve as a deviation reference from the desired visual glide slope. Also, as an experiment, the pitch lines ran all the way across the screen during these tests. Notice how the heavier white flight path angle bar responds rapidly to turbulence and deliberate pitch changes whereas the three degree reference line continuously shows deviation from the glide slope. During this run, an airline technical pilot was evaluating the potential use of the EADI in steep angle noise reduction approaches. Another group of tests in this locale was a series of night landings at Hutchinson Field, Kansas under turbulent conditions a strong crosswind from the right shearing out at lower altitudes. The displaced view of the runway under extreme crosswind conditions has created some problems. However, on airplanes equipped with drift sensors, such as Doppler or inertial systems, 
the display problem associated with crosswind can be handled as discussed earlier. These demonstrations emphasize the fact that the usefulness of the EADI is not limited to instrument weather conditions. Through the use of flight path information, visual approaches day or night can be performed by the numbers rather than eyeballed as in the past. Simultaneous with breadboard testing in the Dash 80, Boeing invited bids from established avionics suppliers for the construction of two prototype EADI systems packaged to ARINC standards and capable of passing functional and environmental qualification tests. The Norton Division of United Aircraft Corporation was awarded the contract and has delivered the prototypes to Boeing. Here in the laboratory in Boeing's developmental center, extensive bench testing is proceeding. Their altimeters are full range. Their displays follow the same pattern as in the breadboard instrument, two foot increments between zero and 90, 10 foot increments thereafter. The horizon controlled by the pilot's gyro no longer runs all the way across the display screen. So gyro differences show up instantly because the extreme ends of the horizon line are controlled by the gyro of the co-pilot system. Specifications also called for an adjustable pitch reference line, the dashed bar seen in this view. Through a knob on the EADI control panel, the pilot may position this pitch bar to a desired reference for visual approaches or use it as a convenient pitch attitude reference, since the basic horizon is non-trimmable. The system has excellent potential for displaying the output of advanced sensors, radar or microvision. And Boeing is conducting and cooperating in research programs and tests for adding sensor information to the television image on the same screen. The combination is showing great promise as an independent landing monitor and the rate of progress is encouraging. With Boeing's programs acting as a stimulus, Several leading avionics firms have also developed EADI systems. These, too, are moving rapidly toward airline service use to improve the quality and safety of flight operations in the heavy traffic environment projected for the 1970s.